Hello, viewers. So, when Peter Obi said that he is now officially an opposition to Tinibu's government, he is not joking. This time around, Peter Obi has come out to condemn the SUVs that they are buying for senators, and he has described this government as an insensitive government, a government that does not care about Nigerians and all what Nigerians are going through. Also, a Yoruba group, Afeni Fere, have come out to kick against the Supreme Court judgment. They have not spoken since the Supreme Court gave their judgment. And now they have released a statement describing the judgment of the Supreme Court as a judgment that falls short, a judgment that is not the truth representation of justice. This is one thing that everyone already knows. I will be giving us details on this and so much more. But before I go fully into it, I would like us to please do well to like this video and please do well to subscribe to our channel if you are yet to subscribe so you will get updates whenever we post a new video. This is what Peter Obi wrote on his ex account concerning this administration's insensitivity. He wrote, The recent expenditure of 60 billion naira for the purchase of SUV vehicles for about 400 legislators is a continuation of the troubling trend in our nation today. We have continued to abandon the critical areas of development measurement while expending scarce resources on needless luxury and creating comfort for those elected to serve the people. Our primary health care, which is the foundation of health, a critical development index measure, has collapsed, leading to our surpassing India, a country, seven times our population. In fact, mortality, a very saddening situation. To allocate such a huge amount, which is more than what we allocated to our primary health care, is nothing but troubling. One third of that amount with proper negotiation would have given them locally manufactured SUV vehicles from Innocent Motors, Pan or any local auto assembly plant to help boost our economy and create and retain jobs. Upon my being sworn in as the then governor of Anambra State, I observed that our state high court judges, state government permanent secretaries, and newly appointed state commissioners had no vehicles. Anambra State government had then ordered for two bulletproof SUV vehicles for my use. I cancelled the order and used the same money to negotiate a concessionary pricing with Peugeot Automobiles to supply us 6406 vehicles, which were enough for all the cabinet members, including myself and my deputy governor. We used the vehicles for our first tenure and were able to commence the work of doing more in the areas of health, education and lifting people out of poverty. Nobody would contemplate this kind of expenditure under my administration. I urge all involved to depart from this part of wastage of public resources. A more prudent and transparent Nigeria is possible. So this is what Peter Obi wrote on his ex account concerning the reckless spending of this administration and he shared how when he was governor of Anambra State they did not even buy any foreign vehicle they invested the money into local vehicles and also invested a large part of his money into healthcare and education in the state on and that's how both him and his deputy governor and other people in his cabinet were able to use the local car for their first administration. First four years, they did not change car. But we are seeing that this administration, all what they are concerned about is how to spend the nation money. Imagine spending 60 billion naira for the purchase of SUV vehicles. That's actually not correct. That's not the way to lead the people. And we are so glad that Peter Obi said he is now officially part of the opposition and he will be calling out this administration so that they will not rest until they do the right thing. Since the Supreme Court have failed Nigerians and we were not able to regain our mandate, but we will not keep quiet just the way other oppositions keep doing. No, we will not keep quiet like he said. He will keep commenting and keep dragging them until they do the right thing. Reacting to what Peter Obi said on X, this person here said, What Nigeria have at the moment is an assemblage of criminals whose sole objective is to plunder the wealth of the country while the citizens suffer and die in abject 
poverty and penury. And that's it. That's what they're after. They're just after themselves, how they can enjoy, why the people you are leading die. If Peter Obi was able to do this while he was governor of Anambra State, it shows that if we were able to get back our mandate, this would have been what Nigerians would have enjoyed. We will know that we have someone who is not just a leader, but someone who have the people at heart. Another person here also reacted and said, I will never be consoled until you become the president of this country. You have the vision and machinery to drive this country forward. The judiciary has buried justice and bettered commonness because no one would ever consider this country national character again. Having seen how justice was miscarried, aborted and buried, I will keep praying for you, Mr. Peter Obi. Hmm. This person here also reacted and said, indeed, a new Nigeria is possible. Thanks for always giving us hope for a better tomorrow. It's quite gloomy now. But we strongly believe we will get there someday. The major issue is how it will happen with this current crop of politicians in power. How do we dismantle the structure of criminality that has snatched, grabbed and ran away with our mandate? How do we reverse the growing trend of greedy power-hungry criminals that are acting larger than life at the moment to the detriment of our collective growth as a nation? These are the issues we face now. These are the issues we must tackle in order to restore hope to the hopeless and dejected. We cannot afford to give up. Our future generation depends on us to right these wrongs in our time. A massive undertaking for all well-meaning and true patriots of this country. And this is it. At this point in time, many Nigerians want to give up. But what Peter Obin is doing now is helping us and making us to understand that indeed we can take back this country. Indeed, a new Nigeria is possible. And our person here also reacted and said, This is what it means to be a credible opposition brought up a valid point with that primary health care comparison. No need for abuses or derogatory remark, but good reasoning. And this is one thing with Peter Obi. He will not come out to insult you, but he will tell you the truth, plain black, and also show you what he would have done differently. And this is it. It's not just about, I want to be in power. What would you do if you were in power? And this is what this administration did not tell Nigerians. And that's why Nigerians did not vote for them. But because INEC rigged the election, and because of how Supreme Court failed Nigerians, they are there. But Peter Obi was able to tell us what he's going to do differently. And he keeps saying the things he would have done differently if he was there. And he also made a statement statement that nobody will bring that kind of suggestion if it were to be in this administration. This person here also reacted and said, this is the very reason they don't want you. They know how frugal you are with money and how vociferously you oppose needless spending. They know you will fight corruption and stop the wanton sharing of our wealth to the elites whose only enterprise is plundering our treasury. And this is it. They know that he cannot be there. And all of this wickedness against the masses will continue. And our person here also reacted and said, Thank God we have you. Don't give up. Nigeria's common man's only hope. Start to shine the light on this unelected government now from the opposition. Your time will surely come due to the effect of the laws that govern all human actions which are primordial and unchanging. In a civilized and rich country, the government doesn't buy cars for senators and members of the house. Some of them use train and other means of transportation to go home. They perform excellent jobs than those looking for luxury SUV. Quite unfortunate. This person here also reacted and said, God bless you. For this journey, you have decided to undergo for us. Keep shining like the diamond that you are. You have become the voice for the voiceless and the mouthpiece of the people. And this is it. Indeed, he has become the voice of the voiceless Nigerian. This person here also reacted and said, When the masses will not have the strength to bear the pains again, they will decide whether to die or rise up to take their country. The corrupt leaders, their support don't mean well for them. Peter Obi, you remain my president. They can't be prudent. They see leadership as a money-making venture, 
why the poor masses suffer and this is it indeed they see leadership as a money-making venture why the poor masses in our nation keep suffering and also afeni ferre have come out to condemn the supreme court's ruling on the presidential poll and according to them all what Einek did was that they wasted nigeria's money in that election because what they did is actually selection not election because at the end of the day after nigerians trooped out in their mass to vote they gave the presidency to someone who did not win the election but to someone who paid them more i'll be showing us what they wrote here see the way this newspaper here reported what they said they said afeni ferre condemns supreme court ruling on presidential poll describes it as electoral reforms billions wasted the pan yoruba social political organization afeni ferre has berated the recent Supreme Court judgment, which upheld President Bola Tinibu's election victory, bringing to an end a legal challenge brought by his two main rivals, who argued that his victory was marred by irregularities. Afeni Ferre's position was contained in a communique issued after the monthly meeting of the group held at the residence of its leader, Ayo Adebiangel, at Isaya Obo in Ogun State. According to the communique, unfortunately, by the Supreme Court decision, the electoral reforms achieved through the agitation of Nigerians for quality control through technological devices and the billions of naira spent on the infrastructure in that regard is now wasted. It's noted that the judgment by the Supreme Court has evidently shaken the confidence of Nigerians in the judiciary especially the Supreme Court, as the last hope of the common man. This is it. The Supreme Court judgment, like everyone know, actually shattered the little hope Nigerians were having in them. We now know that they cannot be trusted. That is it. Because with all the overwhelming evidence that were before them, they would not have given that judgment. All they wanted to do was that they just wanted to uphold Tinibu's presidency. That's why they had to rule in his favor. Because we all know that from the evidences, he was meant to be disqualified, but they failed Nigerians. And from the angle of wasted investment in technology that they bought it from, it is actually the truth. Because Einek just succeeded in wasting the nation's money. Because after all the investments that Nigeria made to ensure that we are able to have these technologies for the election, they ended up saying that it is not a must to upload results in real time. That's what they did. And that's actually clear wastage of the nation's resources. Reacting to what Afeni Ferris said on X, this person here said, This group deserve award group with respect and integrity. And that's it. This group is indeed a group with respect and integrity for them to come out to say the truth without trying to sugarcoat it because it is actually from their region and our person here also reacted and said no sane organization is supporting criminal tinibu and this is it no sane organization in nigeria will look at what the supreme court judges did and say that they delivered the right judgment it's not true everyone knows and our person here also reacted and said even the dead knows what actually happened during and after the election and this is it everyone knows from what the INEC did to the fact that the supreme court in their judgment just we are just fighting and trying to uphold Tinibu's presidency regardless of the evidences before for them and that person here also reacted and said if all well many nigerians don't come together to call apc and i make out then we are pathetic fools hmm. and this is what nigerians are actually doing at this point in time nobody is keeping quiet that's why even from what we are seeing in the off cycle election that will be holding on saturday people are not keeping quiet even in these three states bayasa kogi and imo state nigerians are kicking against apc and they are already calling out the INEC because we all know from what INEC did during the 2023 presidential election and what they are already doing even in imo state that they are supporting apc so nigerians are not keeping quiet nigerians are fighting because what they did in the presidential 
election they failed us it was clear because nigerians were hoping that if we come out in our mass to vote for the right candidate they will give us the person we voted for but at the end of the day we did not see that after nigerians voted they gave us someone who nigerians didn't vote for so people are already wisening up nigerians now know so even in these three elections that is coming up on Saturday, Nigerians are not taking chances with the APC and the INEC. Also, see this report that is now trending concerning Bola Tinibu. It says, worldwide Google searches for Bola Ahmed Tinibu were 200% times higher than usual as his drug case and forgery of certificates from the Chicago State University attracted international attention, placing Nigeria as one country in the world where a drug dealer and a certificate forger controls the affairs of the most populous black nation in the world. And this is it. We all know that this will not stop affecting Nigeria and Nigerians. Just imagine how people are searching for it. Is Bola Simbu truly a drug trafficker? They are just searching for him and Google search shows that he has gotten more than 200 times the search that people have searched of him before now. This is really affecting our nation, Nigeria. That's why Nigerians didn't want him. That's why Nigerians insisted and that's why even Peter Obi Atiku, they were all insisting proof to the court that this person is not qualified to be the number one citizen of our nation but the supreme court failed nigerians and this is what nigerians have to suffer because people will be asking you is the president truly a drug trafficker is the president truly this did the president truly forge his certificates all of those questions and it is really affecting nigerians especially nigerians in the diaspora and nigerians who intend to leave nigeria for greener pasture reacting to this on x this person here said no hiding place for a criminal and that's it everyone already knows who you are and that's why they are searching you out trying to find out more if truly you are a criminal another person here also reacted and said Said, there is no hiding place for him. Every country is abreast of the kind of character he is before he arrives. Hmm. This person here also reacted and said, For those who oppose the truth and rejoice over injustice because they are beneficiaries, only time will tell. The end will sure justify the means. And that is it. For those of his supporters, who will fight, who will insist, who will insult well many Nigerians that are saying the truth, we will all see at the end of the day, you are destroying Nigeria in broad daylight and you are happy because you are benefiting from him. That's not how it's meant to be. It should be that you are interested in the nation as a whole, not because you are getting stipends from them. Another person here also reacted and said, and DSS is telling people to stop demarketing him. Which the marketing is more than this one. And this is it. Even if Nigerians don't speak about it, everyone already knows. The whole world at large already knows, especially after the FBI foul against him. It shows clearly that he was part of the drug cartel that pushed drugs in Chicago. This person here also reacted and said, The painful part is that you will see people who are morally bankrupt, standing and supporting a career criminal for reasons best known to them. This is shameful. It's okay today because it's your favorite. Don't cry tomorrow when someone else carries some baggage and occupies that seat. Hmm. Another person here also reacted and said, Nigeria is in trouble with this mandate thief. What an international and world disgrace. This person here said, We are being mocked by other people all over the world. Out of the blues, you will hear, Is it true that your president is a drug dealer? Hmm. Another person here also reacted and said, Unimaginable. Tinibu has broken a criminal record worldwide. Another person here also reacted and said, Tinibu brought shame to himself and looking for legitimacy by all means would not help. Of what use is his attending the Arab summit for? He should stop wasting taxpayers' money on fruitless trips abroad. And this is it. 
You stole the mandate with all the baggage you carry and you don't even care about the people that you claim you are leading. This is not the kind of Nigeria that we want. And like Peter Obi said, a government is meant to be sensitive to the plight of the people you are leading. You are there not just for yourself, you are there for the people. But all we are seeing in this case is that he is there just to enjoy himself regardless of what Nigerians are going through. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Please do all to share your thoughts about the video in the comment section. Please do all to like this video and please do all to subscribe to our channel if you are yet to subscribe so you will get updates whenever we post a new video video.